The area of metabolic health is one of the great societal issues that we're coming to over the next 20 years. We're heading towards 2 billion people are going to be obese soon. High value nutrition is really key to, to people regaining better health and preventing type 2 diabetes, preventing cardiovascular disease. My interest in obesity and metabolic health started years ago actually when I was a PhD student and came across an article in the New Scientist all about undernutrition, looking at women and children who are having problems with not enough available food and I thought, gosh, I would love to go and work with this group. I had the good fortune to be able to go as a postdoc to the Gambia and worked there for three years. Then came back to the UK and then on to New Zealand where my interest has stayed still in energy balance and nutrition. But it's really moved from undernutrition to the problems of overnutrition, overconsumption and problems of weight control. You don't want to sound as if it's all doom and gloom but it's probably going to get worse and worse. In China at the moment people are a little bit overweight and their metabolic health is bad. In five or 10 years time, they're probably going to be as overweight as the rest of us, yeah. as bad yeah. as New Zealand, Australia, Europe. So I think we're kind of coming in right at the beginning, which is, which is very helpful. High value nutrition has a particular focus on Asia because of the export economy. But from a scientific perspective, Asia firstly is having a major problem with obesity and metabolic health. But secondly, it seems that Asian people are much more at risk when they gain a little bit of body weight. An Asian person who might look reasonably slim to you and I, they often have something that we call the toffee profile, which is thin on the outside, fat on the inside. What we think is happening with, with the toffee people is that the lipid that normally you'd store um, in your adipose store, so on your arms, your legs, a little bit around your trunk, is really spilling over from what we might think of as your safe stores into places that are much less safe. And really commonly, the lipid is going into the liver, it's going into the pancreas. And once it starts going into those critical organs, then that really speeds up the whole adverse metabolic health problem. One really important thing that we'll do with all of our participants is ask them to come to Auckland Hospital and go through one of our body composition assessments. One is a DEXA machine where you lie quietly for about 10 minutes and have a scanning arm pass over the top of you. That measures your total body fat and your total lean tissue. The second thing that we'll ask the participants to do is to go into one of the hospital's MRI scanners. That has a much more in-depth look at your body composition, particularly the pancreas and the liver, which are the areas where we think people who are at risk will be gradually storing fat. At Plant and Food Research, we're working with Sally and the Liggins Institute to identify biomarkers of the pre-diabetes condition, particularly in that TOFI phenotype. So we're addressing three fundamental scientific questions. One is, can we predict the biomarkers involved in the development of type 2 diabetes? The second is, can we measure those biomarkers in blood? And the third is, can we develop foods that interact to reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes? The ultimate goal is the development of high value functional foods that can mitigate the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. I think the health benefits that are going to come from high in value nutrition are going to be really interesting and, and, and for us scientists incredibly exciting. Of course they sit alongside the potential economic benefits to New Zealand as well. Obesity and type 2 diabetes are nutritional diseases both in their cause and also in their treatment and prevention. So I think health and economic benefit will sit really nicely side by side in high value nutrition.